Well, Scott, you're very welcome to Ireland and hopefully a, a good week ahead for you and the team. Um, yeah, it's been really good. Um, there's obviously the little differences from club football, but um, no, I'm really enjoying it and you know, it's a great group of lads. You know, everyone gets on and there's a lot of laughs and it's a good, it's a good environment. It's a very, it's a very nice environment, but a really hard working one as well, which is probably quite a, a really good blend to hopefully be successful. What were your expectations before you arrived? I didn't know what to expect. Obviously, you hear the stories from, you know, Wheelow and Connor at club level. You know, they fill you in on the characters, the staff and all this. So you hear a few things here and there, but I'd, look, I was going into it with sort of an open mind. I didn't know what to expect, um, which has been a good thing, really. I just took it as it come and I've just enjoyed it so far. Now tell us a bit about your Irish background, your, your grandparents on your dad's side from, from Carlo, that was uh, Joseph and Bridget Hogan? I never met Joseph, he was, uh, I think he died when my dad was 17, 18, so I never met him. Um, but my, my grandma, she's still going strong at home, you know, she's, uh, she's only got one leg, she's in a wheelchair, but she, uh, she gets, does everything herself, she's brilliant. Um, yeah, great people, like, you know, she's never always positive and she's always smiling, she's always cracking jokes, she's always talking, you know, I mean, she never shuts up when you go around, you know what I mean? And it passes on to my dad and you just, yeah, she's, she's still got her accent, very, very strong, you know, my friends, my girlfriend can't understand the words she's saying. Um, luckily I do, um, but yeah, they're, uh, they, they grew up together and they married and they moved over here and uh, yeah, they're doing well. Well, my grandma's doing well, shall I say. Good. Well, I'm sure she and your dad and, and the rest of your family are very proud of you. Uh, what was it like? Uh, was, it, was it a bit of a struggle getting the passport in the first place? Uh, no, no, no. It was just, look, I got told to provide certain things and I provided them and then there was a lot of to and fro in um, from the embassy, I think. But it was, all, it was all pretty much straightforward and it was all sorted out quite quickly, you know. Not a lot of stress. There was a lot of work put in and around me to let me just relax. And yeah, it was, it was pretty much straightforward. Go back a little bit though. You, you had been invited to the under 21s a couple of years ago, but at that stage you were suffering a lot of injuries, weren't you? No, it, to be honest, it wasn't to, it was, uh, it was due to a game being rescheduled for Sky. Um, obviously we were playing in League Two at the time and it was a big local derby. Uh, we were going for promotion. Uh, and I got called up to the 21s. The game would have been on a Wednesday night, I think, away to someone, I think it was either Germany or something like that. Um, and the, the game got moved to a Friday night, so obviously my manager wasn't keen on the idea. He wanted me to play and such a thing. And the manager, Noel King, I think he understood um, and sort of left it there. But lo and behold, in that Friday game, I was to get injured. Um, and then as time went by, I'd come back and got injured again. So that put into that season and it put into the 21 thing because you know, obviously I was injured and I think I just turned 22 after that and it was just left as it was because it led to one injury to another from there. So uh, it was just a case of the game being rescheduled for club level um, and the manager asking me not to go, which was ultimately why I didn't, I didn't go. Were you worried at all though that there was a concern among fans maybe that you were kind of biding your time waiting perhaps for an England call? No, look, look I've, always, I've said this in... You know, I'm not, I'm not a very public person. You know, I don't do many interviews, things like that, but I've always said to the people around me and to the manager, Martin, he knew this. It was just a case of my injuries, just getting back playing. There was never a case of waiting for certain things, biding my time because, you know, we're in the here and now, you know, you, it's like football, you take the next game's the most important one. So it was never a case of biding time or anything like that. It was just, you know, I had to think about my career um, and I was, you know, struggling. It was looking like it was going to be a big struggle in my career after my injuries, and you know, sometimes you don't come back from. So I, I had to make sure um, because if I didn't make sure of that, then I wouldn't have been available for selection at all. So never a case of biding my time. Tell us about your your early football days. You always wanted to play football, but you kind of took the the long way around, I suppose. Yeah, it was a strange one. I mean, I enjoy playing football. I enjoy playing football with no pressure. Well, I was younger, you know, I, I didn't like pressure when I was younger. I don't, think, uh, I don't think any kid should be put through pressure as a young lad playing football. I always wanted to play with my mates, so any opportunity I played with my mates. Um, so I sort of just, yeah, I just played with my friends, local teams. You know, I got a call to Rochdale as a kid. 
and then I found uh, what it was like to be a professional footballer. And at the time, I didn't want that. I wasn't ready for that. You know, it was pressure. It was demanding. And you know, I'm, I openly admit I didn't want that. I wasn't ready for that. Um, so I just wanted to go and play with my mates. And I saw I left in the pre-season. I literally left. I didn't tell anyone. I just left. Um, and it it just went from there. You know, played with my friends, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. And then it got to the point where I need a job here. And <laughs> you know, I need to work. I need to get by. And I just took the time out to work hard in the gym one summer. Um, and it, I mean, Brian Barry Murphy. Mm -hmm who was at Rochdale at the time, used to come and watch me play for the non-league teams because um, it was the same manager at Rochdale. And uh, after coming and watching me a few times, they tried to sign me at the end of the season for the last 10 games, but he didn't, he couldn't do it. It, was, it wasn't allowed. So in that summer, they offered me a two-year contract, which was, you know, I couldn't believe it at the time. It was like, wow, what's going on here? Um, so obviously it wasn't great money, but I snapped the hand off. And, you know, everything's uh, sort of, gone on from there. Brentford were very good to you, weren't they? I mean, that was where you, you scored most of your goals, but that's where you suffered most of your injuries as well. Well, it wasn't all so straightforward. I mean, uh, the season I had with Rochdale, I only played five months of football, probably, with injuries and what have you, and getting used to it. But, you know, I managed to score 19 goals in 30 games, I think it was. You know, I wasn't playing up front then. I was playing wide in behind the striker. Um, a few bids were turned down in January off teams from Rochdale and it just got to the summer and it, they accepted the bid. They had a prize for me and Brentford met it. So it was, a, it was a case of the right club at the right time, but then the wrong thing happened in doing my knee. Um, so I never got to experience the championship straight away. You know, I was out and I was on the sidelines for two years at Brentford, um, but that club believed in me and they offered me an extra year to make up for a year that I'd lost which was, you know, I'll forever be grateful for. Um, and then since I got back from my injury, you know, it's sort of what I expect I can do. Uh, you know, I, I delivered and I'd like to think I sort of repaid Brentford in the faith they've shown, you know. Um, obviously, we didn't get promoted or do anything. We didn't achieve, achieve anything. But, you know, I'd like to think I'd, I'd, I'd repaid the faith they'd shown in me. 15 goals in the championship. Well, yeah, well, I think that year it was, I, you know, I started playing in the championship in, I think it was uh, April. You know, I came back from injury in April, played the last seven games. So I think in that calendar year, I think I scored 21 goals in 29 games for them, 30 games. Um, which led to Aston Villa and all the interest. Um, but I like to think that goals record is me and I can do that regular. Obviously, it's not happened just yet, but... Um, yeah, I'd like to think, you know, he's scoring 20, 21 goals, finishing the top score in a calendar year after being out, after missing the first four months of the year. Um, yeah, I'd like to think it, it went well and I always, um, you know, I'm always grateful and for Brentford and you always look out for the results still because they gave me my chance as well. How would you describe your attributes as a striker? How, how, what are your um, best bits? I like to think, you know, I'm not... If I'm honest, you know, people try and get me to do it more. I'm not someone who's going to go and drop into midfield and try and link play and do things like that. You know, I can do it, but I know where the goal is, you know, so I'm not going to score a goal uh, on the centre circle, you know. So I like to play in the last man, you know, my movement. I like to think my movement's really good. Um, I like to think I'm quick, you know, I can take people on, shoot. But I think my main attribute is my movement in and around the box. You know, I'm, you'll never find me anywhere other than between the two posts in the box. You know, if the ball's going in the box, I'm around. If we're breaking, there's a counter attack, I'm heading straight for that goal. So I think my main attributes are, you know, I'm quick, my movement, and, you know, you'll never find me outside the box. You've got an amazing opportunity this week for these two games to make your senior competitive debut. Um, in two of the most important games we've had in recent times. Yeah, it's, look, um, you've got to just go enjoy football, haven't you? Um, I know the size of the games, you know, I've been told, I'm aware of it, and, but at the end of the day, every game should be feel like that because at the end of the day, we're trying to forge a career, we're trying to succeed. Obviously, it's different for me, you know, now I'm representing a country rather than a club, you know, I'm not representing a city anymore, I'm representing a country, possibly. Um, 
but you know, I've, I've watched the Island games, I've watched all the qualification. I think if everyone works hard like they always do, you know, I think the rest will follow. But um, it's exciting, but you've got to enjoy it as well. But it, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Now, you said that if Roy Keane came and asked you to play for Ireland, you, you couldn't resist. Uh, he was a big hero of yours. You're a Man United fan, of course, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, he is a big hero of mine. Um, I was born 92, as you know, so the earliest stages, my dad used to get me the videos, so I used to watch that growing up. But I was born in the era of Ferguson, Keane, you know, where they won everything. I was lucky. Um, but yeah, he was up there. I mean, there was Keane, Cantona, Ronaldo, Van Nistelrooy, Van Nistelrooy were my, you know, they were the ones for me throughout the, throughout that period. Um, Although your dad liked Dennis Irwin as well, didn't he? Yeah, my dad did like Dennis Irwin. Um, he, he was Dennis Irwin, Brian Robson, Roy Keane, George Best years ago when he was younger, obviously. But um, yeah, Roy Keane, he was just, you know, he was the Irish, the Irish fella in the, in the team. Dennis Irwin obviously scored a lot of goals from left back, which was incredible, right back. But Roy Keane was the main man and my dad, yeah, my dad was a big fan of Roy. But it's funny because Roy said this week that if you were overall to meet him, that after a week you'd be sick of him. How's it gone so far? No, he's, he is, he's quite funny. You know, he's razor sharp. I've learned that, I've been told that, and yeah, I've not, many, not, many, not met many sharper than himself. I mean, you know, the first words he spoke to me was, um, are you good to have you on board? Where have you been for the last year? You know, so it, it was straight away, there it was, and it made me smile. Um, but no, look, I'd, I'd never be sick of anyone trying to help me play football. And that's what he's there to do, he's, he's trying to help us. He's trying to teach us things that he's been through as a player and what he knows and how he knows to win games. So I'd never be sick of anyone trying to teach me how to play. You know, I've not been on the wrong end of him just yet. But, um, and then, you know, it's time for everything, I suppose. So when you think about it, the, the players that have recently retired, the age profile of, of the strikers in the squad, um, yourself, Maguire, O'Brien, this could be the, the new regime, if you like, the, the new era for Irish strikers. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I think if you look at yeah, the squad, there's still the strikers in there, you know, Shane, Darrell, they're quality strikers, you know, they're very, very good strikers. Um, but, you know, I was aware, of, you know, there's not many coming through of a younger, you know, Sean is obviously a younger lad, you know, I'd, I'm probably young still in terms at 25. You know, there's not too many that are around. Um, so hopefully we can learn. That's the first thing we have to do is we've got to learn from the experienced lads. And we've got to take in what they've achieved and what they know what to do and what it's like. And then hopefully, yeah, it'd be nice to be the future. But hopefully it's, it's a good future. That's, that's all we're aiming for. And if you do get some game time at the Aviva, either starting or getting on the pitch at some stage, how do you think you're going to feel? How do you think you're going to react? How are you going to cope with it? I, look, I, I won't have any emotion because, you know, I've got to I treat it as a game. The, the, the emotion will come before or after the game. But in that 90 minutes, it's a game and you've got to control emotions in football. So, you know, I'll, 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 I'll be calm. You'll have nerves because I get them before every game or I get them before every time I come on or whatever. So... But it's a game, and that 90 minutes it is a game, and you've got to treat it as a game. And then afterwards, and before the emotions, etc. You know, you know. Hopefully, I'm looking back on it on the win, and it'll be a you know extremely, extremely proud moment for myself and my family. But you know, I'm looking at it as a game for now. And then if we win, I'll get carried away for an hour or two, which I do after any game we win. Um, but like I say, I've got to treat it as a game and it's a must-win game as well. And to move it on then, hopefully with the three points to, to Cardiff on Monday and how big that could be. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to both games. Obviously, I want, to, I want to make my debut. I want to play Friday, I want to score Friday. And then I want to play Monday and I want to score Monday. Um, but I think the ultimate goal is to win both games. You know, if we can win on Friday and it sets it up in Cardiff, um, I've got every confidence you can go to Cardiff and win. Um, what, you know why can't why can't we beat them you know they're not it's not Brazil it's not it's not Germany you know we can beat them and it, it's sort of a well, you know sort of a playoff game isn't it and yeah, anything can happen in playoff game cup final sort of game so I think the most important thing is to win Friday and then we can 
then consider because it, if you don't win Friday, it's, it's all a waste of time sort of thing. So Friday's the most important one, but hopefully you can set it up on Monday night. It strikes me because you were born in, in 92, gosh, you were only 10 the last time Ireland were at a World Cup, that was at 2002 in, in uh, Japan and Korea, the one that Roy Keane didn't end up playing in in the end. Yeah, I, I remember watching that actually. Yeah, um, all unfold. 10 years of age? Yeah, my nana had it on, my grandma had it on and my dad at um, their house. So we, it was sort of, I used to watch that. It just seems so long ago now, 2002. Um, it just seems forever that game, you know, when you look back on it, it looks so like old fashioned and, but it, it's, hopefully, hopefully, there's a next year that we can say, you know, that's the last time Ireland played at the World Cup is next year, hopefully. Because since then, though, there have been big moments last year, uh, beating Italy in, in Lille, uh, that famous, wonderful goal by Robbie Brady, uh, or you look at Shane Long's winner against Germany, there's been some fantastic moments we're looking for those sort of inspirational moments and goals again. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, that's what you're in football for. And it, it goes back to the difference between, you know, representing a country, you know, you, you score one of them goals, you make a whole country happy, you know, rather than, you know, you might make the city happy or whatever. You're making a whole country proud and excited and sort of bragging rights, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I watched the game when they beat Italy. It was... It was brilliant and obviously I remember the Shane Long goal against Germany as well. Um, there are moments you come into football for in any 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 level. So hopefully, um, if it's not me, someone else can do it. And as long as we win, that's all that matters. What about Scott Hogan, Irish hero? How does that sound? How does that feel? Well, that's, yeah, I've, I've got it in the, it's, it's up there. I've, I've, had a, I've had dreams and visions of it, yeah. But um, fingers crossed, eh? Very best of luck to you. Cheers, man. That's brilliant.